Hello class, this is section 7.3 and in this video we are going to discuss higher dimensional eigenvalue problems. Whenever we try to perform separation of variables in a 2D or 3D partial differential equation, we get this higher order eigenvalue problem, an eigenvalue problem that involves x, y and not just x. It turns out that the way to solve this is to perform separation of variables again. So we look for f, x, y, and we look for product solutions again, and let's call them little f and g. And let's do that. And let's see how what happens when we plug that in. And I'm going to make things a bit quick. So we have g, y, f double prime x plus f, x, g double prime y equals lambda, sorry, plus lambda f x g y equals zero. Let us now divide every term by f x g y. So if you divide, divide by f x g y, what you get is you get f double prime x over f x plus g double prime y over g y plus lambda equals zero. Let's move all the g y terms to the right and let's put a lambda there with it. So we get f double prime x over f x equals minus lambda minus g double prime y over g y. So here's the thing. We again have a situation where the left hand side just has x terms and the right hand side just has y terms. So the left side is independent of y and the right side is independent of x. So it must be true that both sides don't depend on either x or y. So this is a constant. And let's call that constant minus mu. Again, the sign is there for a good reason, just to make things a bit more standard. So we have these, these equations now. f double prime x over fx equals minus mu and g double prime y over g y equal lambda minus mu. The first one is just the regular old boundary value problem that we have done in the past, the one dimensional boundary value problem. And the second problem is a bit more complicated, but as you can see, it's really not much more complicated. Now, um, I forgot to give you boundary conditions here, but let's just set them right now. Let's say that we have boundary conditions. So all the boundary conditions are zero. So this corresponds if you are thinking about the vibrating membrane equation, a rectangular trampoline, where all four sides are set to height zero. So given that boundary condition, we have here also the boundary condition f not equals f of length equals zero. And the solution for one is that we have eigenvalues n pi over l squared with n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on with eigenfunctions psi and n pi x over l. This is just the same eigenvalue problem we had dealt with over and over again in the first few chapters of this course. Now let's consider the second problem, which is a bit more interesting. So again, we have these boundary conditions, g0 equals g of height equals 0. Now, Here's the thing. We can consider a fix n. So let's do that. So we fix the mu eigenvalue, and this leaves us with this equation, lambda minus mu n. So mu n is n pi over l squared, of course. It's a fixed number. And we can then try to solve this eigenvalue equation, of course, with this g0 equals gh equals not boundary conditions. Now, if we imagine that this was just one constant, let's call it k, k or whatever you want to call it, we know that lambda minus mu n has to be of the form m pi over h squared. And this, it is indeed an h and not an l, because our g boundary conditions are g0 and gh, not g0 and gl. And m going from 1 to 
3, and so on, with eigenfunctions for g given by sine m pi x over h. So this means that our lambda must be of the form m pi over h squared plus mu n, or rather m pi over h squared. So remember what mu n is. Mu n is just going to be of the form n pi over l squared plus n pi over l squared. So these are our lambda. And you may notice that lambda is not just indexed by an n, but it's indexed by two variables, m and n. So for each m and for each n, you get one eigenvalue. And m goes from 1 to 3 to infinity, and n goes from 1 to 3 to infinity. So you have these lambda. And let's see what the eigenfunctions correspond to. So here is the g eigenfunction. The g eigenfunction is going to be n pi. This should be a y, not an x. Pi y. So this is the g eigenfunction. And this is the x eigenfunction. And therefore, this eigenvalue corresponds to an eigenfunction. Let's call it um, fmn xy sine m pi x over h. Oh, not, not, I made a mistake again. It should be a y here. Times sine n pi x over l.